वेलकम टू ई पी जी पाठशाला आई एम डॉक्टर नीरू टंडन फ्रॉम वी एस एस डी कॉलेज कानपुर वी आर डिस्कसिंग द पेपर इंग्लिश लैंग्वेज टीचिंग इन इट दिस मॉड्यूल सेकेंड लैंग्वेज एक्विजिशन इज गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट इंग्लिश एज अ सेकेंड लैंग्वेज फॉर इंडियंस नाउ whenever we talk about second language acquisition there are three things second language and acquisition it's a language which language we are talking about english because in india after mother tongue native language english has acquired the position of second language it's no more a foreign language it's a second language and second language will have to be acquired l1 l2 that are the names by which we understand l1 means native language and l2 means the acquired language the second language the language that we learn after learning are native language if we want to define second language acquisition in the words of klein i quote a language is first and so it is acquisition if no other language was acquired before otherwise it is second thus the mother tongue which is acquired primarily by a child when his language cells are empty is his first language l1 and the language which is acquired learned in addition to the l1 is the second language or l2 it is difficult to identify a precise date when the field of second language acquisition popularly known as sla research began but it does appear to have developed a great deal since the mid 1960s stephen krishen who made a sharp distinction between acquisition and learning in his 1982 theory of second language acquisition popularized the term acquisition he used learning to refer to the conscious aspects of the language learning process and acquisition to refer to the subconscious aspects now when he talks about the difference between learning and acquisition primarily on the surface level there is no difference learning a language fine acquiring a language what's the difference between the two individual learning a second language use the same innate processes that are used to acquire their first language from the first days of exposure to the new language in spite of their age they reach similar developmental stages to those in first language acquisition making some of the same type of errors in grammatical markers that young children make picking up chunks of language without knowing precisely what each word means relying on sources of input humans who speak that language to provide modified speech that they can at least partially comprehend this is the view of the collier now when we talk about second language development it has got four stages pre production early production speech emergence and then intermediate and advanced fluency now first stage known as pre production is also known as silent period as in our mother tongue we have a silent period like the child takes birth nobody expects that he'll start speaking from the day one we give him almost 2 years to listen to comprehend the language whatever language it may be and then we expect that child will speak some words then he will join those words 
he will start speaking in sentences maybe not grammatically correct and then after some time he start speaking properly but when it comes to second language acquisition silent period it's a very difficult one to follow to accept neither the learner nor the teacher nobody is ready to accept it it is observed at the beginning of exposure to the new language it may last from a couple of days to several months esl beginners who listen but rarely speak in the new language make just as much and frequently more progress in second language development as their more talkative classmates by the end of the first year of exposure to english so this silent period should be given to them so that the comprehension should be proper and then they may come forward to speak now comes early production that is the second stage this stage may last up to 6 months and students will develop a receptive and active vocabulary of about 1000 words during this stage students can usually speak in one or two word phrases they can use short language chunks that have been memorized although these chunks may not always be used correctly so this is the early production and it is same for every language whenever we acquire whether it is l1 or l2 third stage is the speech emergence students they have developed a vocabulary in the second stage but till third stage almost 3000 words they must have acquired and now they can communicate with simple phrases and sentences they will ask simple questions they may or may not be grammatically correct such as may i come may i go i want this i want that may i go to bathroom so english language learners will also initiate short conversations with classmates they will understand easy stories they will read in the class with the support of the pictures they will also be able to do some content work with teacher support stage 4 talks about intermediate fluency whenever we judge any speaker about the concept of the language we judge him on the parameters of fluency how fluent the speaker is english language learners at the intermediate fluency stage have a vocab of 6000 active words they are beginning to use more complex sentences when speaking and writing and are willing to express opinions and share their thoughts they will ask questions to clarify what they are learning in class now at this level they have certain questions to ask they have certain doubts now they are trying they fail also and then they are ready to clear those doubts and move ahead to gain proper fluency after this stage students start writing and they will have many errors also but they will try to master the complexity of english grammar and sentence structure many students may be translating written assignments from native language they should be expected to synthesize what they have learned and to make inferences from that learning this is the time for teachers to focus on learning strategies to use the methods approaches and techniques students in this stage will be able to understand more complex concepts now stage 5 known as advanced fluency now at this stage when students are well versed with the vocabulary well versed with the sentence construction and the grammar of that second language which takes them 4 to 10 years to mastery at this level students they are out of the doubt area they have questions but they have answers too most 
English language learners at this stage have been existed from ESL and other support programs. At the beginning of this stage, however, they will need continued support from their teachers, but later on they will have fluency in speaking and they will be able to communicate through writing as well. Now as we were talking that language learning and language acquisition, they are two terms. Now what is the difference between the two? Are they same? or they are different? If yes, then what is the difference? Language acquisition is a subconscious process. If you are exposed to any language, whether you are willing or not, whether you are trying or not, you will acquire that. Language learning requires a formal knowledge of explicit rule. You go to school, you go to college, to learn a particular language. You go to some classes, particularly get command over that language. That is language learning. So we are talking about second language acquisition. Then what is second language acquisition? In second language learning, language plays an institutional and social role in the community. It functions as a recognized means of communication among members who speak some other language as their native tongue. In foreign language learning, language plays no major role in the community and is primarily learned in the classroom. That is learned, not really acquired. The distinction between second and foreign language learning is what is learned and how it is learned. What is the study of second language acquisition? Especially, we can say that it is the study of how second languages are learned. This how is very important. You have learnt it, just hearing it, just acquired it without any conscious effort or you have tried with interest to inherit it to take it and to get command over it, there comes the role of how. How learners create a new language system with limited exposure to a second language. Then we consider why. Why most second language learners do not achieve the same degree of proficiency in a second language as they do in their native language. Now this is the question to ponder. You also think, as a learner, you never tried so hard to learn your native language. You even never noticed when you started and when you started speaking properly. But as far as second language is concerned or any foreign language is concerned, you make conscious efforts. You just count the time period. You try to get mastery over it. Even then, you are not satisfied. It's not. Yes, I can understand. I can speak. I can communicate. But not like the way I speak in my mother tongue. Why such a difference is there? Why some learners appear to achieve native-like proficiency in more than one languages? That is also another question. Now, the answer will come in another question, the question is, how do learners acquire a second language? This how, when you answer this how, you will get the answers of the last two questions. Why some learners get the proficiency and some don't? Because it depends upon how you have acquired. Learners, they acquire a second language by making use of existing knowledge of the native language. General learning strategies or universal properties of language to internalize knowledge of the second language. These processes serve as a means by which the learner constructs an interlanguage. Communication strategies are employed by the learner to make use of existing knowledge to cope with communication difficulties. Now, it depends upon the language learner as well. 
what is the position of language learner, what are the capacities of language learner, what is his position in L1, how proficient he is in his L1. So, individual differences affect L2 acquisition. They may include the rate of development, their ultimate level of achievement. Learners differ with regard to variables relating to cognitive, affective and social aspects of the human being. Fixed factors such as age, language learning aptitude are beyond external control. Like a learner, if he is young, then he may adopt things very quickly, but adult learners may take a little more time. Variable factors such as motivation are influenced by external factors such as social setting and by the actual course of L2 development. Let me make it more clear. What happens when any adult learner comes forward to learn English? He feels a sort of unconscious humiliation, inbuilt humiliation that till date he cannot speak English. Because speaking English, specifically in India, is related with your education standard, with your social standard and somehow your mental standard as well. If you cannot converse properly in English, then whatever amount of knowledge you have, maybe in a certain arena, you are not going to get that respect that is due. Cognitive style refers to the way people perceive, conceptualize, organize and recall information. So, that is the main problem why they have hesitation. They don't want to come forward openly to learn the second language. They don't want to admit that they are not really proficient in L2. Now, what are the strategies that are being adopted for learning the second language? Learner strategies, as we call them, are defined as deliberate behaviors or actions that learners use to make language learning more successful, self-directed and enjoyable. Cognitive strategies relate new concepts to prior knowledge. Metacognitive strategies are those which help with organizing a personal timetable to facilitate an effective study of the L2. Social strategies include looking for opportunities to converse with native speakers. Now, when we discuss the strategies of L2 development, we should not forget Chesterfield and Chesterfield who in 1985 identified a natural order of strategies in the development of a second language. They are five in number. Number one is repetition. Repetition, imitating a word or a structure. Just in any house with any child, we say, we just tell him or her a word and again and again we tell, please repeat that, repeat that and that is imitation and by imitating he learns and starts speaking within no time. Memorization. When the child is a little, he gains some age, then he is in a school and he is just told some lyrics and he is supposed to memorize them. He is recalling songs, rhymes or sequences by rote. Then the third is the formulaic expression, words or phrases that function as units like greetings, how are you, I am fine, good morning, good evening. Stage 4, verbal attention getters, language that initiates interactions, situation based. In any particular situation, the child is comfortable and starts speaking. And finally, answering in unison, responding with others without any preparation, he can just answer the questions asked. Then. Talking to self, engaging in internal monologue, he can, whatever he thinks, he can think in the concerned language. He is talking to himself, the monologue 
in the same language, no need to translate it. Then elaboration. If he is studying something, he is given a passage and he is supposed to elaborate, there is no problem for him. He can elaborate because he has thoughts and he wants to express those, those thoughts, whether he is in debate or he is writing some paragraph or something like that. So he has the capacity to elaborate information beyond what is necessary. Then anticipatory answers, completing another's phrase or statement. Then comes monitoring, like wherever he is wrong, he will self-correct himself because he understands where he is committing a mistake. But unknowingly when he commits that mistake, he tries to correct himself. Appeal for assistance and if in the process of correcting himself, he feels at loss. He is not confident whether whatever he is doing is correct or not. He just asks for assistance, takes help. Then request for clarification, asking the speaker to explain or repeat. And then presentation like role playing. He starts interacting with another by taking one kind of particular role. This is the process of second language acquisition. Language has been acquired through this process. But there are certain theories related with second language acquisition. Because it is not just a process. It's a part of curriculum. So what are the theories? Number one, universalist theory. It defines linguistic universals from two perspectives. The theory driven perspective which looks at in-depth analysis of the properties of language to determine highly abstract principles of grammar. System, internal factors are those found in cognitive and linguistic processes. Second is the behaviorist theory that dominated both psychology and linguistics in the 1950s. This theory suggests that external stimuli can elicit an internal response which in turn can elicit an internal stimuli that lead to external response. This is also known as SRR theories. The chain come about because of the nature of the environment and the nature of the learner. Environment provides the stimuli and learner provides the responses. Another theory comes as the nativist theory. It views language acquisition as innately determined. Theorists believe that human beings are born with a built-in device of some kind that predisposes them to acquire language. Nativists use more of a rationalist approach in explaining the mystery of language acquisition. Chomsky in 1965 claimed the existence of innate properties of language that explain a child's mastery of native language in a very short time. Nativists have contributed to the discoveries of how the system of child language works. Theorists such as Chomsky, McNeil and others helped us understand that a child's language at any given point is a legitimate system in its own right. We cannot avoid the cognitive theory which views human beings as having the innate capacity to develop the logical thinking. This school of thought was influenced by Piaget's work, where he suggests that logical thinking is the underlying factor for both linguistic and non-linguistic development. Cognitivists say that the condition for learning language are the same conditions that are necessary for any kind of language learning. The environment provides the material that the child can work on. Social interactionist theory supports the view that the development of language comes from the early interactions between infants and caregivers. Suppose a child is in the care of a maid who belongs to different community and speaks some other language. If that caregiver speaks in some other language, child gets exposure 
and it becomes easier for the child to accept to acquire that particular language without much effort social interaction is stress the importance of a child's interaction with parents and other caregivers in a proper way the importance of mothers contributions of context and the word knowledge the importance of goals and the importance of social interactions child is like a clay in the early years whatever kind of impact factors will be there he or she will acquire it without any problem so that's why it is said that parents and caregivers should be very very particular about whatever they are just producing in front of the child acculturation theory according to this theory sla is fixed by the degree of social and psychological distance between the learner and the target language culture motivation and ego boundaries play major role in the process of acquiring or learning l2 why ego boundaries suppose a person of 40 years of age thinks that he is going to learn english he wants to learn english and if he is there in the class where a 5 year old child speaks english very well and he is at loss even to understand or write a single page then the ego comes over there how to learn it how to learn that in front of the little children that the thing that is known to them he don't have any idea about it there comes the ego to learn it contrastive theory it claims that the acquisition of a second language is largely determined by the structure of an earlier acquired language that is simply the native language or the mother tongue those structures of the second language that coincide with corresponding structure of the first language are assimilated with great ease as a result of positive transfer contrasting structures on the other hand give rise to errors as a result of negative transfer or interference identity theory it is contrasted with the contrastive theory which asserts that the acquisition or availability of language has little or no influence on the acquisition of another language while identity theory says that first and second language learning are basically one and the same process governed by the same law monitor theory is there it assumes that adults have two independent systems for developing ability in second languages subconscious language acquisition and conscious language acquisition and that these systems are interrelated in a definite way subconscious acquisition appears to be far more important that is fixed also The vital point of this theory is that learning in this sense is always caused through a monitor or an effort on the part of the learner to control his language output and to self correct it whenever necessary. Now there is one word related with second language acquisition that is language transfer. What do we mean by language transfer? Where the two languages were identical learning could take place through positive transfer to the native language pattern if simultaneously child is learning two languages then what will happen intermingling of some words or some transfer will be there two languages if they are different learning difficulty arose and errors occurred resulting from negative transfer Chomsky set in motion a reevaluation of many of the behaviorist claims this reevaluation included area such as the dangers of extrapolating from laboratory studies of animal behavior to the language behavior of humans they were pointed out all these things all these theories they led to the reconsideration of the role of l1 in l2 learning now let us talk something more about norm chomsky because universal grammar the theory that he propounded is very very important to understand whenever we talk about second language acquisition innate linguistic 
Chomsky's knowledge, which consists of a set of principles common to all languages, he propounded that theory in a very simple way when he explained and said explanation for second language acquisition is there. Popular belief is that languages are learnt mainly through imitation. If you will just hear people speak again and again, again and again, then you will inherit some words and you will start, you will try speaking those points, words, sentences and you will learn. But you cannot get command over that language by imitation. You cannot get mastery over that language in the written communication only by imitation. Parents usually correct young children when they make errors. People with a high IQ are good language learners. Early start in L2 learning brings more success. Most mistakes learners make in L2 derive from interference of the L1. Learners' errors should be corrected as soon as they occur to prevent bad habits. Let me talk about these myths once again in detail. The first thing that we say languages are learned mainly through imitation. I told you it's not always true for the developed. Now parents usually correct young children when they make errors. Yes, they do. But when they feel that child is learning a language, when he is at the stage of acquiring a language, they enjoy the simple mistakes or errors committed by him. They don't. People with high IQ are good language learners. It is a myth. People who try their level best, who put efforts to learn second language, they also learn it well. Early start in L2 learning brings more success. Yes, because at that time, memorization, the functioning of brain is more. Most mistakes learners make in L2 derive from interference of the L1. It's not always true. Whenever you just construct a sentence, at that time, it may hinder or interference may be found. But it is not that they commit mistake because of the interference of L1. Learners' errors should be corrected as soon as they occur to prevent bad habits. We have different theories regarding it. This point, some theories say that errors should be corrected, but some theories say let them be fluent, let them commit mistake, let them come forward, let them speak, and let them self-correct them. So there is no need just to silent. They should have the silent period and watch it. Now there is a criteria for a theory of second language acquisition or second language learning according to Long and he propounded it in 1990. He accounts for universals, environmental factors, age, acquisition rate and proficiency, cognitive and personal variables, learning as well as acquisition, other variables besides exposure and input, interlanguage systematicity, the varied cognitive processes involved in acquisition. So all these points are very, very important. They have got their specific role, whether it is age, whether it is capability, whether it is situation, whether it is demand. So all these things have great role to play in second language acquisition. So cognitive variance, second culture learning, new linguistic system and communication functions all have got their role in second language acquisition. Now the factors, in fact, that influence the acquisition of a second language, they are internal and external both. When we talk about internal factors, so we talk about age. Second language acquisition is influenced by the age of the learner. Inspired adult learners can learn easily because they take help from the native language. But it is not easy for them to accomplish native speaker like pronunciation and intonation that comes at the early stage, early age. Personality, introverted or concerned learners usually make slower progress, particularly in the development of oral skills. Many students will not care about mistakes and more and more practice by them 
will make them perfect gradually then there are self motivation how they how conscious they are to learn it why they want that particular language is it necessary for them so the, it is intrinsic intrinsic motivation is very very significant factor for second language acquisition esl students who are motivated to learn the second language for impressing their respective partners for their social status to take admission in any prestigious university or for their jobs are likely to make better efforts and thus better progress we can just take a very simple example that every one of us might have experienced one or the other way have you ever visited agra in india there you will find that the inflow of the foreigners or the english speaking people is a good number now even a rickshaw wala even a roadside seller knows well how to speak to them how to speak that much english in which he can communicate and he can just impress them and tell about his or her product why so whether he has gone to some school to learn that no he had acquired that second language for himself because of the necessity from where he has acquired and how he has acquired that is a thing to understand that is the innate desire that is the self correction motivation to speak because that is quite needed for his work experience second language learners who have been exposed to various languages and cultures are seen as a stronger base for learning a further language than the student who has no such experience cognition in general it seems that students with greater intellectual abilities will make the faster progress some linguists believe that there is a specific innate language learning ability that is stronger in some students than in others students who are learning a second language from the language family of their first language are generally quick learners suppose someone knows german very well it will be easier for him to learn english as well someone who knows hindi very well it will be easier for him to learn sanskrit well so because of this native language proficiency they pick up another language within no time there are some external factors like curriculum if language learning is there in the curriculum so students will have to devote time energy pay more attention to language learning instructions much depends upon the quality of instructor because some students do better if they get better and qualified instructor who are dedicated towards teaching and they motivate these students then there is culture and status some evidence that students in situations where their own culture has a lower status than that of the culture in which they are learning the language make slower progress stimulus students who are given continuing appropriate inspiration to learn by their teachers and parents will generally do better and faster access to native speakers the opportunity to interact with native speakers both within and outside the classroom is a significant advantage because this way they get practice native speakers are linguistic models and they can provide appropriate feedback clearly second language learners who have no such exposure are not that successful particularly in the spoken language now there is lad language acquisition device chomsky had talked about it and his scheme is that the acquisition of the structure of language hangs upon a distinctive identification method he calls it as language acquisition device lad 
that is in effect programmed to accept its surface structure of any natural language as input and to recognize its deep structures by virtue of the kinship of all natural language to a universal deep structure that human beings know innately. It is better to learn a second language when one is young or when one is older? That is a question often asked. Why? Let us think about it whether both have their own plus and minus points. Noam Chosky had told about it. We are designed to walk. That we are taught to walk is impossible. And pretty much the same is true of language. Nobody is taught language. In fact, you can't prevent the child from learning it. There is the convincing answer. Can you prevent a child from learning any language? If you will not teach him any language, to whatever language he is exposed, he will learn that. So, how great it is to say that language learning should be done at the later stage. It is claimed that the natural order of acquisition is very similar for a native English child learning its own language and for an adult learning English as a foreign language. For example, the ING form that we often call present continuous tense will be acquired early and almost certainly before the S inflection in the third person present simple she likes, she eats, she drinks. As Krishen points out, much of the frustration experienced by teachers and their students in grammar lessons results from the attempt to inculcate a grammatical form which the learner is not yet ready to acquire. Again the same, adults learn second language quicker than children, true or false. The popular view, the children have the advantage in learning a second language has substantial support in research, although it is not unchallenged. One approach proposes that the child's fertile and flexible brain possesses a unique capacity for language that the adult no longer has. Children acquire language through subconscious process during which they are unaware of grammatical rules. The emphasis is on the text of the communication and not on the form. Now there are various conditions. Innate factors must be explained, must consider the influence of environmental or contextual factors, should explain differences according to age, can not only consider affective factors for learning, considers learning as both a conscious and subconscious process, considers that learning is something else beside comprehensible input, should include cognitive factors and the learner recognizes the U-shape of learning. Now we have seen that second language acquisition is very common but the process is not so simple. People have different views. Theorists have their own point of view regarding this and a process methodology is there, research is being conducted and various factors are being included for this second language acquisition. Thank you for visiting EPG Pathshala.